Okay, this is my this is where I came from. I came from the northern part of Philippines, which is about 2,000 uh, 2,000 meters above sea level. Okay, at 2,000 uh, ayah 2,000 meters. 2,000 meters above sea level. So, in our place, it's cold. The, uh, the temperature is about, it reaches up to 7 degrees. Okay? This is where the famous rice surges is. Okay? So, in our tribe, you wear, you know, G-string? G-string? Yeah, I know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have a picture of me. Sumo. So, in fact, you have uh, Sumo. a thick wind follow. Uh, okay? <laughs> yes, uh, there's there's nobody in Myanmar wearing g -string. No native? No. No? Okay. So, in, in our country, uh, it's us and the Aitas, those Negritos, the black one, they wear g -strings, no? And we have this uh, spear and uh, shield. So, before, we are fighting against each other, cutting each other's head, no? So, we are, we are, we are called headhunters. Okay? But not now. Of course, we are now Christianized. Okay? So, in this area, okay, we have to walk from this, from here, to get into this rice paddies. Okay? That's how far my, uh, our house is. But, there, but now there is a road from here going here. Huh? But before, we walk for about four hours and that four hours is about too, too fast, no? Fast walking. Okay, ah, this is the other clinic that I work with. So oh, that's Dr. Nance, that's where I work during Saturdays, but sometimes I do it in my own clinic. Okay. So we have so many aesthetic uh, cases. So in her clinic, I do aesthetic uh, patient and uh, prostate, because I'm also a prostodontist. A ceramist, I do, I'll do ceramics, crown and bridge, porcelain, crystal metal, both, but mostly uh, my training is on uh, metal free. Okay, I was trained in Evo for for uh, before I'm doing Empress. Who knows Empress One? Empress One, that was way back 1990s, and Empress Two before it became Emas. Okay, now it's Emas. So you don't remember Empress? Empress, yeah. Empress is there. Okay. So I'm also a denturist. So I'm trained for BPS system, InvoCup system, Vertex system, this is Vertex, and uh, Palapress system. You know Palapress? Uh, it was just shown a while ago. Palapress system is a high impact denture system. Huh? Okay, next. Okay. So I do, in the Philippines, in my aside uh, on Saturdays is my clinic days. The rest is workshop. So I go around Philippines doing workshop. So whenever we do workshop, we have to do it on the patient's mouth or doing it actually on the on the model. No? You'll be working on one model that I use in the Philippines. Uh, her name is Solem. No? For other cases like impression, impression, uh, retraction cord gingivoplasty, we do it on the patient's mouth. So each dentist do each other's uh, case. So uh, the other slide, the other slide. Go back, no, go back, go back, yes. Okay, that, that slide, okay. Guess what? What, what, what is it all about? This is Ile Ole. So we do workshop, part of the 
training is in the only. Okay? So it is uh, it is a uh, it is bad it is better to learn you can learn better if you do it no if you experience doing it we learn by watching but it is better the best uh, uh, experience is by experiencing it it's the best learning uh, experience okay next then after the workshop we always do each each day that uh, we finish the workshop we do photography group photography because in each day we always have this color coding so the next day we have to wear pink we have to wear floral uh, or black so this day it's blue okay, next uh, this is floral okay so on this day they have to wear floral okay and in lunch time for us to have uh, a light uh, or to, or for the workshop to be lighter we have to eat outside so we go around okay that's part of the workshop next okay. this, this is a new group so they're wearing ah this is the first day so the first day we don't have color coding okay next okay I just came from a graduation we did graduation about this was Sunday. Okay, so coming from here, from the graduation, we went straight to to Bangkok, then here. Okay, so we just finished our graduation. That's the reason why I'm still uh, sick because of the hectic schedule that we did. And after this, tomorrow we we'll have workshop in Philippines in the southern part in Makona. So doing another workshop because there's a new group in in the southern part of Philippines. Usually our workshop is an eight-day workshop for uh, cosmetic workshop. For prosto, it's seven days with patient. Okay, next. Now, I will I will not be talking too much about uh, types of veneers or or or, or just just uh, let's just uh, skip those uh, part. Uh, but I have to discuss about the preparation okay first okay you can see it in the internet okay this preparation yes this is all labial just labial the labial involved in the incisal next labial involving incisal and the lingual so you have lingual chamfer or they call it wrap around. Okay, but I'm discouraging you to do this preparation. Avoid this, especially this. Yeah. Okay, this is a drawing, but in actual case, you will make this very thin. In the actual case, the, but the problem is we. We are uh, we are taught about this preparation. And this is very popular, especially in the Philippines. Very popular, okay, especially in the Philippines, because this is the preparation that we that we teach to the to the dentist in the Philippines. Because I was under in Bukarest before, so uh, we 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 lectured about this preparation. Okay, so this should be how you prep veneer. Okay. So we lectured it in the Philippines and we also lectured it to the dental technicians. So whenever you send cases to dental laboratory and they don't see this preparation, they will reject your prep. Doc, this is not the proper prep. You can, please kindly, kindly prep it again. Uh, put legal chamfer. So they are more knowledgeable than the, than the, than the dentist. Okay. So please avoid the preparation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So again, avoid this prep. Okay. Just.
just simple labor preparation. It's okay. Let's be uh, conservative in our practice. Okay? Another thing, another thing. Uh, even in the Philippines, uh, dentists usually do crown. Whenever patient comes and they, the patient has two class three, no, Michelle and Diesel class three and class five, okay? What's the treatment? Crown. Okay? If lingual surface is not involved, do not do crown, please. Do not do crown. Veneer is okay. Veneer is enough. Okay? Avoid doing crowns. Okay, try to, to see it this way. If you were the patient and you have that case, you have class three, big class three, and you know veneer, what will you prefer? Okay, first is just just a simple uh, composite. No? The problem with sim just simple preparation of composite or simple restoration using composite during class three is the margins. Unlike if you do veneer, okay, the restoration is invisible. And it is very conservative. You don't have to prepare 360 degrees. And the patient will end up with uh, periodontitis. Because you didn't, you didn't uh, address the, the margin. The usual problem with crown are the margin. The patient has halitosis. Most of the case, most of the case, the reason is the patient has crown or bridge. And is it the patient's fault? It's our fault. We need the restoration. So avoid crowns. Okay? Start doing veneer. Veneer is, is uh, very effective and less and more conservative. Okay? So another thing. Another thing, it's not here. Another way to prepare veneer is guess. Any guess? Another preparation technique for veneer. Any guess? Huh? No prepping. You don't have to prep. <coughs> there are cases where you don't have to prep. No more preparation. Okay, or or just prep the margin. Just prepare margin. Do not prepare the labial surface. Just margin. Point two, put to point three, up to uh, point five is too much. No? Oh, okay, if you want one point five, okay, just the margin. Proximal to cervical to proximal. Then done. Okay, next. Now we we'll go to build up. But first, we have to know our composites. We have to be familiar with composites. The problem is, just like in the Philippines, just like any other part of the world, even in the US, dentist is using only A3, A2, A1, done. Resulting to gray composite, gray restoration, okay? Before, when I was still young, I was, uh, I was uh, selling composites. We sell package. We don't sell by, by, by syringe, okay? And if you see the package, they don't touch the dentine. They don't touch the, the special enamel. They, they just touch A1, A2, A3, B2. Done! Uh, how about the other composite? Okay, uh, I use it for my posteriors. Because it's not, uh, it cannot see it, no? But, you see, you see in my India only, what did I use on the first layer? Dentine. Dentine. Okay, you will hide discoloration using dentine and it will hide the black oral cavity. Okay. This is an essential part of our restoration. Whenever the team is involved in our class four, your class four, you do class four or class three. Okay, without the team, without the team, no? your restoration will 
will appear gray. Okay, what what shade do, do you usually use? What shade? A3? A2? Huh? <coughs> Just like in our, in our country. A1, A3, A2. Then, after restoration, polish. Okay? Okay. Then, take the shade. The shade will be C2, C3. But I use A3. Why? What's happened? What happened? The, no? Don't believe in, in, in chameleon effect. Ah, no, we have, our composite has chameleon effect. Every composite has chameleon effect. It's just a selling point. No? Okay, you didn't mask the black oral cavity. What's the color of our oral cavity? Do we have light inside our mouth? That's it. Do we have light? Light? No. No. So if you see it, it's colored black. Yeah, it's colored black. No? So, okay, you use translucent, that's not, not transparent, okay? So for example, this is your composite, which is translucent, okay? Oral cavity is black. So, your, your restoration will appear gray. See? So you have to cover the lingual surface using dentin. Look at this. Can you see the black and blue line? This is just one mm. <coughs> this is just one mm. Okay? Is it visible? A little. Just a little. But if you put another 0.5 mm, this will be invisible using dentin. Okay? Now, using enamel. See? This is regular enamel. Okay? But I used, and this one, this is one called another charisma. This is his, this is his special enamel in size stuff. Very translucent. But this is not. This is a, I think A3, then A1. A1. Okay, next. So, she's a dentist, one of my students. So whenever we do workshop, I choose, there's, there are volunteers from the dentist, okay, who wants to be restored so that the other dentist uh, can see how to do it. So aside from doing it, no, experiencing it in Lysa, this is Lysa, okay? They have to see it in the early, in a real patient. So we do real patient, so this is, she's a dentist and she wants her teeth to be identical, okay? In their clinic, they did two one to restore the class three that she has and straighten the the tooth because it's a little I think it's a little butterfly so they applied composite regular composite oh, then next there can you see okay. next what's missing it appears grayish. Can you see the gray area? Okay, next. Okay, can, can you go back? Okay. Now, first, we have to analyze the tooth, the color. What do you see on the proximals? Is it the same as in the middle third? Is it the same? Okay, don't, don't just put one color. Huh? Okay, there, there are two colors or three colors. On the proximal, see? Proximals, what's the color? Or we call it value. Uh, in, 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 in ceramics, we call it value. Value is whiteness. Whiteness. It has high value. 
meaning it's white. Okay, so I have to use white composite on this area. Okay, and the rest should be this is A1. Yeah, A1. Okay, next. Okay, remove the old composite. Next. And put red again. Again. There's the refraction point. Okay, next. Then. Okay, after acid etching, rinsing, drying. Good morning, Doc. After acid etching, rinsing, drying. Okay, I have to completely remove the circular fluid. Okay, saliva is not a problem. It's, it, you can easily manage saliva. But circular fluid, yeah, it's hard to manage it. One way to manage it is to use tissue paper. Yeah, tissue paper, just insert tissue paper inside the sulcus, and the tissue paper will absorb all the, the circular fluids left. Okay, you cannot remove tish, uh, the, the circular fluid using air syringe. Try to do it. Air syringe. Shh, shh, shh. Then, try to put uh, tissue paper, and you will see that you have a wet tissue paper, meaning there are still circular fluids left. So, remove circular fluid using tissue paper. Okay, next. Then, apply bonding agent. Now, in your, when doing, when applying bonding agent, you have to read the instructions. The problem is, you're not reading instructions. You just assume. Okay, just put, apply. It says there in the instruction, if you check the instruction, there's an instruction there, there's a drawing that the brush goes around, meaning you have to apply, apply, okay? Apply for 20 seconds. It says there 20 seconds. Okay, apply, 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 especially on the dentine, okay? What we want to do is we want to, the, the rest, the, the primer from the bonding agent because our bonding agent has three component. Okay? Gluma bond 5 has three function. Okay? It is a primer to penetrate the dentine. It is also a bonding agent and it is a desensitizer. You're familiar with desensitizing, no? Desensitizer lessens or removes sensation, sensitivity. So it's three in one, okay? Apply bonding agent for 20 seconds. It says 20 seconds. For whatever bonding agent that you use, please read the instruction. Next. Okay, next. Okay. Actually cure. I don't I don't have the, the camera. Okay. Cure. Then okay, another technique that is very effective and I want you to do it. Because this will avoid circular fluid from contaminating your uh, working area. We don't want the circular fluid from contaminating our working area or else will have discoloration on the margin, okay? After few minutes, there will be again circular fluid coming from the circus. So to avoid that, we have to apply, okay, put a thin layer of flow. Can you see the flow? Okay, so from here to here, apply flow. Flowable composite, regular flow then cure. Now it's isolated. Okay? Does it make sense? It was very effective for me. Because I always have, because since I'm always into direct composite, I always have this problem after one month. I see the patient she has, and she has this gray line or blue line in the, in the margin. And 
the culprit is circular fluid. It's not the patient's uh, own. Don't tell the patient, ah, oh, because you're, you're eating too much, blah, 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 no, no, it's your, it's your fault, it's our fault. So, avoid, avoid discoloration by isolating the margins, apply flow, then cure. Then we can work freely without, without, uh, uh, without the contamination of the sugar fluid. Okay, next. Swinging. Okay. Okay, next. Then, okay, now, first layer, first layer. What should be the first layer? Dentin, yes, yes. Thank you, Doc. Dentin. Apply dentin. The first layer, whenever dentin is involved, to mask discoloration coming from the What's the color of this? The oral cavity? It's black. To mask the black oral cavity, apply dentin. Okay? Dentin first, okay? But do not exceed the DEJ. Okay? Always leave space for enamel. Okay, next. Next. Okay? Then, finish with brush. Finish with brush, okay? This afternoon, you will learn how to handle brush, okay? So finish with brush. I'm using a regular brush from art, art store, the one that they use for painting, or you can use the cosmetic brush. Are you familiar with cosmetic brush? The one that we use for eyeshadow and lips, okay? You can use that, but be sure to wash it with the uh, monomer or else it will ruin the, the shade because uh, some, some cosmetic brush has this brownish stain. Huh? Whenever it comes into contact with resin, it will, it will stain. Huh? So instead of having white, you'll have brown composite. Okay, so next. This brush to finish, okay, next. Then, okay, there, V1. Apply B1 on the margin only, just on the margin. T layer, okay, next. Then, finish with brush again. Then next. Okay. Now on top, on top of the restoration, apply your final shade, so use the shade is A1. So I use A1. Okay, next. Then finish with brush. Now for final build up, for final build up, you can now wet your brush with a bonding agent. Huh? Okay, do it only on your final build up. Okay? not during the layer technique. Do it on your final buildup. And for final buildup, do not build up incrementally. Avoid entrapment of bubbles. Okay, cut, extrude, then cut one hole, then put it on the surface, then manipulate it to avoid bubbles, then remove, just remove excess. <clears throat> then next, finish with brush, wet with resin. Uh, I want the, the brush to, 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 to manipulate the, the composite uh, easily. Okay. Next, then cure. Then after that, after the final buildup, okay, we want to copy the adjacents. So how do, we, how do we copy the adjacent? The problem is we cannot see it. It's all colored yellow or black or white. Now, for us to have contrast, use articulating paper. Okay. You have to roughen the surface first, no? Or else the uh, articulating paper will not uh, adhere. Okay. So, okay, copy the developmental group. The next, ah, uh, use uh, use carbide. No, don't use. Do not use diamond. Okay, carbide 
the finish of carbide is smooth while diamond is rough so it's hard you'll 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 have hard time polishing uh, the finish uh, surface using diamond unlike carbide now carbide is smoother okay next okay final texture next then okay now there using scalpel number 12 i'm now removing the excess and it will be easy for me to remove excess what are the excess what is the material that i'm removing now ah huh? what composite flow very very soft very soft material okay did i did i do final curing during build up during build up five seconds is enough done okay so in every step five seconds is enough just to harden it a little just to fix it then another layer five seconds then another layer five seconds so this is not completely cured okay so it will be easier for you to remove the excess this is scalpel number 12 okay next there oh it's bleeding a little okay it's hard to avoid that now look at the margin the color is identical see that yeah. Ah, one thing that I wasn't able to copy is the middle third. It should be a little wide. No? At least it's uh, a little identical. Okay, that's a problem with centrals. With central, you should be very meticulous. Okay, if you're doing lateral, it's okay, but for central, for me, sometimes I I repeat the process. Whenever I don't get the I don't get the, the exact shade or near the exact shade, I repeat it. No? Problem is, if you repeat, you have to go from zero again. You have to acid edge, rinse dry. No. Okay, next. Before and after. Uh, there's still some powders. <laughs> I wasn't able to remove the powders. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Okay, see? Okay, look at the texture. Look at the texture. It's identical. It's because of the texturing and polishing that I did, no? Okay. Uh, this afternoon, you will learn how to do texturing. Next. Next. Ah, okay. She, uh, he is a bike mate. Uh, I mean, uh, she's my one of my he is my, one of my companion for biking because I'm into biking. Uh, for me to to relax myself, I I go biking, mountain biking, not road. Because uh, for mountain biking, you'll see green. You know, it's big space, and big space is relaxing. Okay, even though it's uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, uh, the energy that we use for biking is too much. No? So for one day biking, you will lose about 4,000 calories. <laughs> yes, for one day biking. So, one of my bike mate, and if ever, whenever we work together, he's, he doesn't smile that much. This is how he smiles. <laughs> okay now i told him okay let's have a photo okay smile next now i told him a joke smile then see another problem with him is he is a coke lover okay he has problem with occlusion okay this is this is very important whenever you do uh uh veneer always check first the occlusion if there's problem with occlusion your veneer will chip off so first i i did some uh, adjustment on the occlusion and uh, i will see him again uh, next week because i just did his case this 
last week, no? Friday before our graduation. So I did uh, his case Friday. So when I come back, I will, I will do, I will put uh, TMJ split to adjust the portion, or else uh, he will break his uh, all his uh, veneers. No? Next. So that's his case. So he has so many class five and lingual class five and class three, class four, okay? And he has so many class two. Okay, next. And uh, didn't you notice the attrition? Huh? Because of malocclusion, see the attrition? The lateral is longer than the central. So it's a negative for a beautiful smile. So no smile line. Okay, next. Okay, so I did a took impression, so did some wax up. Okay. For wax up it should only it should only take you about fifteen to thirty minutes. Up to 45 minutes if it's complicated to do wax up. Okay? If you do wax up, the first time you, that you do it, it will take you hours. But once you get used to it, it will take it should take you only 30 minutes to do wax up. You know? uh, I do it easily, I can do it easily because I'm a technician. You know? So I advise you if you want to go further or farther, you have to be a technician yourself. Try doing your own uh, veneer or your restoration. Okay, now that you've learned how to do uh, inlay only, do it yourself. Okay, of course, uh, for the first time, you will have some mistakes. Okay, that's common. You will learn from your mistake. So the next time you do it, you do, uh, you do it uh, better, then better, and better, and better. Okay, so same with veneer. Okay. Try also to do indirect veneer. Take impression, prepare, take impression, do it in the stone. Then it's done. Okay? Now, okay, next, after this, I take pot impression of it. Then, on the pot impression, I will inject temporary material. Then put it in the patient's mouth. Okay? Next. You're familiar with any can you turn to the no no previous no no previous who are using temporary material here for crowns, bridge and minutes? Temporary crown, yes. But Injection, yes? Yeah? No. For the temporary. essential part of my indirect restoration okay I don't want my patient to go uh, to go home without any temporary okay another 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 use of temp is for mock-up mock-up no so I want the patient to see what's his final restoration be what will he look like yeah for, uh, not provisional, but mock-up. So I'll be doing mock-up. Next. Okay, remove. After three minutes, then. There. Okay, JC, this, will, this is how you will look like. Okay. Okay, this is a preview. 
And it's a preview of uh, what will be the outcome. Okay? So he will know how will she or he look like. Okay? So if he wants some adjustment before going into final illustration, at least he will see what will he look like. Okay. It is better than CAD CAM or than, you know, are you familiar with Smile Designer? Smile Designer? Smile Design? Yes. Computerized? Okay, the problem with that is the patient only see it in the computer. So the patient will have an idea what will he look like after the restoration. Okay. So, but you can you can uh, copy this restoration if you do it indirectly. But for direct, at least you'll have a guide. Okay. So if you do indirectly, the laboratory will just copy it or cut gum or uh, make uh, a wax out of it. Okay. So, that's it, see? So the patient says, wow, dog, I look better. Okay. Then, do not remove it. This will be your guide for your preparation. So please, do not, do not prepare your patients immediately. The problem is whenever patient comes to our office, okay, dog, I want, I want, uh, I want a uh, crown. So what do we do? Prepare. <laughs> Prepare 360 degrees. What if the tooth is slightly lingoverted? And the, the patient wants it to come out a little labioverted. So do you prepare the labia? But we learned from the school, okay, on the, lay, on the cervical, you should prepare a 0.8 to 1 mm. On the middle third, 1 mm. On the incisal third, should be 1.5. Imagine, it is lingoverted and you do that. Prepare 0.8, 1 mm, 1.5 mm. Then cut. Okay? Done. Then on the lingual, prepare the same. On the proximal, prepare. Prepare. Imagine that. You don't even have to prepare the labia. No? Because it's lingoverted. Why do you have to prepare it? So just prepare margin for crown. Huh? Okay. So next. So at least we have a guide. Okay, next. Without removing, without removing the temporary, prepare. Okay? We have you have to do a guide prep. One mm only. One mm. On this on, on our veneer prep and even crown prep, we use only two burr. One mm and tapered, tapered burr with round end, meaning the tip should be rounded, not flat. Not round edge, but round end, okay? We need to do chamfer, not shoulder, okay? We'll do chamfer, okay? At 45 degree angle, okay? At 45 degree angle, prepare horizontal grooves. Okay? You have you have to prepare it until the the neck. Okay, the neck will serve as the stopper. So that your round burr will not penetrate more. So only half of their 1 mm diamond will penetrate, will be able to penetrate the labial surface. So, if we're using 1 mm, how many, what is the depth of our preparation? What's the depth? What's the depth? What's the depth? Why? Uh, no, we use 1 mm. We use 1 mm. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.5. Only half of it, so 0. 0.5. At least we're sure that we only did 0. 0.5 mm. Okay, then next. Okay, do about two to three horizontal group. Next, there, see, okay, next. Then, remove all the group, 
groups. Only the groups, huh? Again, only the groups. Remove all the groups using round-ended fissure, tapered fissure diamond. Next. We have two planes, incisal plane oh, on the incisal half and link, uh, cervical plane. Then after the prep fission, okay, after prep, did you notice? Did I prepare most of the labial surface of the natural tooth? Okay, the white ones are temporaries. These are temporary. The yellow ones, the yellow color is the natural tooth. Did I touch majority of the legal surface? Only parts. I did not touch. I didn't touch majority of the legal surface. Only parts of it. Meaning, meaning, I don't have to prepare too much. If I want to achieve that, that, uh, that uh, final restoration, I only have to prepare this. This, this. All the exposed part. Then done. Okay, next. Then remove, no? Remove, next. Okay, after removing, okay, do not prepare, do not uh, continue the preparation. Just prepare margin. To prepare margin, we, we want to prepare margin, Okay, we have to put retraction cord. Okay, we need to put retraction cord to avoid circular fluid and to have a good margin. Okay, please avoid overhang. So you have to put retraction cord and for you to be able to put retraction cord properly, use knee them. Okay, again, knee them, no? Not braid them, knee them. Okay, luckily, uh, Ultanet, you know Ultanet, they have this very good retraction cord. Okay, it's called Ultapak. Now, after 10 years, patent, uh, patent is gone, so they can copy it. So there's now a copy from, from Korea and China of the same, the same cord. Okay, this is not a special cord. This, it's just a cotton cord. No? It's knitted. What is special in this cord is, it is knitted. So the cup is just as good as the original. Okay? So you can, you can, you can use any knitted cord. So put it inside then, next. There, so you can see. Ah. ah, what's happening? Okay, so it, but you just saw it. All the premolar to premolar has retraction point. Okay, then start preparation. Prepare supra gingivali. Again, prepare supra gingivali. Okay, without touching the gums. If you prepare supra gingivali, if you remove the, the retraction cord, it will be a little uh, sum or equi. Okay? But for this case, it should be supra. Okay? When do we use supra and sum or equi? If you want to change the corner into a lighter one, especially B1 and bleach, from A3 or A3.5 and you, the patient wants to, to have white teeth, B1, A1, or bleach, you have to do subgingival prep, okay? But if you want to, like in this case, this is A3.5, then I did A3. I said to him, let's make it a little lighter. So a little lighter, so from A3.5 to A3, so there's no, there's a little change. So I use equi. So this is equi. After removing the, the cord, it will be equi changing Okay, next. Okay, I only do margin. Do not, okay, can you go back? No. Okay, forward. 
I'm sorry for the presentation. It's, I have a problem with with uh, my mouth. No? the labial, only margin, margin, proximal to cervical to proximal, okay, then that, next, okay, prepare margin only, okay, next, then using the same, the same model, okay, I have to do my matrix for the lingual, it will be my guide for the anatomy, okay, next, okay, next, I see that she is dry. Next. Not more than 10 seconds. Uh, uh, not more than 10 seconds. Then rinse not less than one minute to avoid, to, uh, to, to remove all the phosphate salts. Phosphate, phosphate salts uh, can hinder bonding. So uh, one minute rinsing, then, then dry. Next. There, then bonding agent. Then, 20 seconds, brush continuously. Next. Okay. Then air. Next. Okay, again, gently air. Not just air, gently air. Then cure. Next. Then, what's the first layer? What's the first layer? The thin. Okay. I have to put that in layer on the inside cell and on the proximal, next. Okay. And finish it with brush. Again, no. No, do not cover the whole inside cell edge. You have, you have to, you have to have space of about 0.5 mm. Not too much, not more than one mm. Only 0.5 mm on the inside cell edge. There's no such thing as two millimeter in size and translucency. Okay? Then next. Finish with brush. Next. Okay. Then on the cervical to cover the discoloration. Okay, after putting the dentin, those discoloration will be done. Okay, next. Note, leave space for enamel. Then finish with brush. Now this is this is, I use cosmetic brush. This is for lipstick. See? So, because during this time, there's no available brush, because brush is disposable. So I have to buy brush from a nearby mall. Next. How many percent of battery are there? Then cure. Then on the inside sun and a little of proximal again V1. Next. V1 on the proximal, inside sun, proximal, then next. Okay. Then cover with A3. Next. And finalize anatomy. And brush and do the same on the adjacents and on the remaining teeth. Okay, next. Okay, then bevel should be from cover surface to DEJ, not just bevel. Okay, that's for class two. Okay, so now bevel, and uh, after after uh, cementation, you can just uh, finish the, the margins. Huh? Okay, thanks. Okay. Ah, 
build up of the two centrals. You will you will see that I always uh, I always focus on the two centrals for uh, alignment. Okay, next. Again, okay, article is in paper, okay, for contrast, then adjust. carbide burn okay to for texturing next then do the same on the following teeth next now you'll have an identical texturing Margins continue finishing using carbide. No, it's this is this is a finishing carbide about uh, 12 to uh, 30 fluted the, uh, carbide. Okay, that this will give you a smooth finish, unlike diamond, which is rough. This is smoother no? and this is <coughs> polish. Okay, next then. Final polish it with silicones. Okay? This silicone I'm using is a shine. This is a one step. This is a one step uh, polishing. Now, if you want a better one, do a two step. Okay. This silicone is diamond impregnated. It has diamond dust and silicone carbide dust inside. So, you use it lightly at five to 8,000 RPM. This is very important. Five to 8,000 RPM. But in this section, it says it should be with water. But the problem is my, my contra angle doesn't have water. I, I, I'm in a rush because I have to finish the, the patient because we have graduation on the following day. <coughs> so I have to finish it. So then next. Again, lightly, huh? not exceeding 8,000 RPM. Okay, on the proximals, proximals and cervicals on the margins use cups, the polished margins, again, lightly. And in this step, you should be very, very patient. It will take you long to polish it. Okay, next. Okay, proximals, next. Then, uh, do you notice there are lines? These are implication lines. If you see your patient, if you see a natural teeth, there are <coughs> these shallow horizontal lines. It's called implication lines. No? Okay, so to have a natural looking implication line, you can use the angle. 
here, the angle here. A 45 degree angle, pass your, silico uh, your silicone horizontally to create <coughs> imbrication lines. Okay. Next, again, up to 8,000 RPM only. Then, after polishing, buff. Any soft material, leather, cotton, shami, uh, uh, what's the other material? It's felt. Okay? These are laboratory polishing materials. These are materials used for polishing denture and porcelain. So you can use these materials intraorally, but you have to use a fresh one. This, because these are not autoclavable. Okay, and these are cheap. Laboratory materials are cheap. So for final polishing, but it will take you minutes, no? for final polishing, use, use buffing materials, soft and dry material, 5,000 to 8,000 RPM only. So you use straight hand piece. Okay? And again, huh? 5 to 8,000 RPM. Okay, next. There. Okay, next. See? Okay, don't worry about the space. We always try to cover that black, that black hole. But the problem is, we always have this, this uh, undercut, overhang. So, this will go, don't worry. After a few months, this will become, because uh, you, you made it uh, smooth, no? So, it will grow. Okay, next. Let's see. Okay. Can you go back? <clears throat> okay, there. Now, can you notice? Can you notice? The white, 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 white. That's B1. And this is A3. Okay, on this, on the cervicals, we have dentin. So it will look natural, not unicolor. Okay, next. Four. Upper. Okay, next. Okay, now the patient smiling naturally. So we have another case. Okay, on this case, I have class four. And again, is the dentin involved? Is the dentin involved? Yes, it is. Dentin is involved. So in this case, I have to use again dentin on the lingual, then leave space for enamel, and again, did you see, did you see the white? White? So again, I have to use B1 on this area. B1. Okay? So, dentin and B1 and A2. Okay, next. But, for complicated cases, complicated cases. Okay, next. For this case, I, I, I restore this. Now, for this case, I have to use, this is, this is complicated, I have to use stains to copy the adjacent. The problem is, there's not enough, I should have used blue on this part. <clears throat> okay? Uh, my blue is not enough, or I didn't see it. So, I should have added blue on this part. Okay? But at least it is a little identical, no? Okay, unlike before, see? And the patient has this space because of the old restoration, it is, there's an impeachment of the cervical, no? So don't copy that. Okay. Next. Ah, there, another case. Next. Class four again. For this case, I use dentin again, and A1, and a little strips of B1. Okay, so the buildup is not 
it should be incremental lines. Although I wasn't able to copy the natural distribution of y, because when I was copying it, it's a little dry, so I saw white lines. When, when the tooth returned to its uh, uh, regain its uh, water content, it became like this. So there's no white line anymore. Huh? So avoid the, uh, dehydrating your tooth, digest them. Huh? So that's this is what I saw. So I did this. After rehydration, it's like this. Sorry. At least a little identical. Okay. And again, did you, did you see the, the margins? Okay, because I want to have a good margin. So I put retraction cord, then after removing the retraction cord and cleaning the margin, that's what happened. At least the margin is clean. Okay? Next. Okay. Done. Okay, that's it. So, are there questions? Questions? Hmm? Any questions? Opacity. Yeah. Now, you will experience it. No? Uh, you, you will be working on, on smart dentine. Okay? You can put it in any letter. Okay, you have it here. You can cover this. Put one millimeter then you'll see that it's covered. Uh, uh, before, I was using other uh, other dentines. No? So with other dentine, I had to put extra opaque to mask. So with this, with my class 4, that dentine is enough. Okay? Except for lighter shades. You cannot use uh, a smart dentine for, for bleach. Because it's too chromatic, okay, too dark. So if you put, if you put it, uh, if you use it as your dentine, then you want to achieve white. It will show through. For that, for those cases, I suggest that you use uh, charisma topaz, okay. For higher, higher aesthetic uh, cases, no high end aesthetic cases, use charisma topaz. So Charisma, Charisma Topaz has opaque bleach and white uh, bleach and it has also has uh, opal effect. It has opal feel. Huh? But for simple cases, for simple cases, just smart is okay. You don't want to have wide range of composite. Huh? For complex cases, com complicated cases, just buy stains. No? That will be enough. Okay? Before, since I, as I told you before, I'm trained in uh, Evoclar. We are used to wide range of of uh, materials. Okay? Uh, I, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, uh, Empress Direct. You've heard of Empress Direct? No? Empress Direct cost more than $100 per syringe, $100 per syringe. And it has 30 plus syringes, 30 plus syringes, and contains only 2.5 grams each. So you have to buy that in order to achieve those uh, complicated cases, okay? Now you only have, need a few syringes, eight or ten syringes, and stains if complicated cases. Yes, doc. Yes, doctor. Is there any special modification for the nanomicer? For has it been treated? To, for veneering on the has it been treated? You cannot treat it. Uh, 
for the preparation are you talking about preparation uh, doctor preparation, preparation of uh, use of the material no 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 Technique. Ah, for for other other materials. Uh, you mean? Ah, okay. For root canal treated toothpaste, just use dentin. It will hide the discoloration. It will hide the 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 dark the dark uh, uh, labial surface. It will look gray, grayish uh, brown for 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 uh, endotreated tooth, no? Okay, so just cover it with dentin. You, you can try it now. You have all of you have dentin. Try to cover the letter. Okay, you have making practices easier. You can cover let the letter M here. Okay, you have here M. Okay, put the screen. On top of it, there's a letter M. Okay, apply them in one millimeter only. One millimeter, and you'll see that you, you will be able to cover that letter. Okay, and for our buildup, we need only one to 1.5 mm buildup. For them in, for, for, uh, for endotated tooth, you have to you have to make it deeper. Okay, about 0.8 mm. So go deeper. And this is the case wherein you have to go subgingivally. We don't want to have lines on the cervical, gray lines on the cervical. So do prepare subgingivally. For for you to be able to prepare subgingivally, you have to put retraction cord. Please. Try to learn how to put retraction cord. Okay, use knitted retraction cord. Okay. Uh, I hope I, I I answered your question, doctor. Any more question? Yes, doctor. One more question. Uh, I I I saw a, a lot of video cases. This the the complaint is about. Whose technician is staying in between the teeth? So in, in between the veneer, in, uh, in the proximal area. Yeah. Uh, so I'll let you know about. Uh, you're, we're talking about indirect? Uh, no, no, no. Direct, direct, direct veneer. veneer in finishing in between the teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't finish the. the yeah. Do not finish the proximals. Do not finish your proximals. You, we used. Uh, you notice that we used uh, strips, but for strips, it should be. Thin strips. Do not use thick matrix uh, matrices. Use thin strips. I think we have directa. Okay, it should be so thin. Okay. So if you okay, try to imagine this. You use a strip which is very smooth. See that? Smooth. So if you build up on that area, the proximal will be smooth. Okay? Do not touch it with finishing strips. You will make it rougher. How are you, how you how will you be able to to polish it? How can you polish the proximal? You roughen it with finishing strip. Okay. Then after finishing it, the proximal will be rough. Then how can we polish it? You will you won't be able to polish the proximal. So don't touch it. It is already smooth. No? Just remove excess using scalpel. Scalpel number one is okay. No? Okay. Questions? Anyone question? We're only how many are we here in the in the room? We're only less than twenty, so don't be shy. You can ask questions. Yes, doc. Do you give any expression after making the meal for your patient? Any any expression? Ah, okay. And so for care, okay. Composite is very different.
from uh, porcelain. With porcelain, it's okay. No? It's easy to maintain the, the shape. But for porcelain, for porcelain, okay, avoid abrasive toothpaste. You can feel it. So look for uh, smooth toothpaste and avoid hard brushes. Your brush should be soft. And toothbrush, toothbrushing should be like this. Floss and soft toothbrush. If you use hard toothbrush and abrasive toothpaste, okay, you will roughen the, the composite. It is a composite, not porcelain. Uh, of course, it has porcelain in it, but it, it has resin. So it will become rough. Okay, and uh, after about six months to one year, you can recall the patient for repolishing. Okay, you can repolish it. Okay. Of course, that's an added uh, cost for them. Okay. Yes, no? Ah, it will last. Okay. How how long will a composite veneer last? How long will it last? Okay. I had I had my patient. Uh, actually, he's my brother-in-law. Uh, I did an indirect veneer using. I don't know if you're familiar with Targis Betris. Targis Betris is a hybrid, not microhybrid. It is, it is a hybrid composite, meaning the, the particles are big. Okay, so it's hard to polish it. And it lasted 16 or 17 years. Okay? This is not a microhybrid or not even a uh, microteal. It's a hybrid. Targis Betis is a hybrid and it lasted up to 16 to 17 years. Then he came back to me because after it chipped off, the company that he worked with, the dentist there, uh, restored it with a clinical composite and it's not good, it doesn't, it doesn't look good. Of course, the, the, the one that did it is a GP, not familiar with veneer. So it looked terrible. So, so I have to change it. No? At least more than 15 years. More than 15 years. What's the difference between indirect and indirect? Just a little. Uh, the, the good thing with the indirect is you can polish it uh, the laser is better. Direct composite, uh, indirect composite, uh, the laser is better than clinical composite. But minimal difference. Huh? So I suggest if you want to move further, do it indirectly. To, to practice yourself, it, there is a less stress doing it indirectly than doing it directly. But if the patient is in a, in a hurry, he has to go home, and he doesn't want to come back, do it directly. Okay? Now, another thing. Okay. If you do veneer every day or in a week, at least once a week, okay, you'll get better and better and better as years goes by. Okay. The last, the last, uh, graduation that we had okay the speaker that I got to, to, to speak to the graduates are two of my students two of my students okay uh, uh, they were under me from January to March for three months we had training, okay? They had training before, but of course that the, the training that they had is uh, different from the training that I did, okay? Then after that, they continue doing good veneers. And what they showed in the graduation 
okay some of the presentation that they they did are better than mine it is better than mine if you see it wow it's very good it is because they they're, they're doing it every day so if you do it in your clinic every day you will you will improve a lot okay now if you have class 3 okay somebody will go and come to your clinic and you have class 3 okay we can do better because there's a new technique I can do it uh, to your to your team okay okay you cannot charge class 3 I you cannot charge uh, veneer if the patient doesn't have money but you have to practice yourself so class 3 do veneer class 4 do veneer class 5 do veneer <laughs> <laughs> okay, you will practice yourself from from one just one uh, just, just one tooth. Okay, you can do now. You can now do premolar to premolar by just practicing. Now, another tip for you to have more veneers is what my students are doing. They they are posting it in their Instagram. Oh, if somebody. Uh, for somebody has a uh, internet you can you can uh, uh, how do you call that you can search one more, one of my student Charlie Manawis no? Charlie Manawis you will see her work she was under me only this year Charlie Manawis you will see her work uh, she's one of the presenter because okay, she's doing it regularly on a regular basis she's like it's like she's eating a veneer every day <laughs> and they are very young dentists these are not these are millennials okay so I'm telling my my, my senior dentist okay we will be beaten by these millennials they are so aggressive okay so, and that's what they do all the all the class three all the class four and class five they're doing it veneer they do veneer so it's true that practice makes perfect okay if you cannot do it in your in your patient get early do it in your cast just practice okay don't worry this afternoon I will teach you how to manipulate composite easily okay you will learn how to manipulate composite in easy way not complicated way and we'll do one layer Okay, we'll do two, two veneers. One is single layer, two is about three to, uh, two to three layers, okay? And we'll, you will also learn uh, texturing and polishing, okay?